Hello everyone and welcome back to CodeStar Technologies. We are still continuing with the Daraja API and uh, in this case we are dealing with customer to business. And remember, as I said in my previous video, which is, which is this one, it's about SDK push. I said that um, a customer to business APIs are two, that is SDK push and register URL. So in this video, I'm going to uh, take you through register URL API, even though I did a video about this one. Um, but this one was done back when um, uh, we were using uh, Daraja, it was version, the previous version, before the Daraja version 2.0. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do this one. And at least for you, will be able to understand how it works. Now, uh, in case maybe it's, it's your first time to be on this channel, make sure you click the subscribe button. Share our videos to as many people as you can if you're in campus, college, and all those kind of uh, places. Or maybe you're working out there and you interact with your colleagues. You have a WhatsApp group where you normally share some content, Facebook and all that. Share with them our videos, links, and tell them to subscribe to our channel. Now, um, in case maybe if you want to learn about this Daraja API for you to understand, because I always keep on telling it's very, very hard for us to uh, cover the whole thing. I'm running a Daraja uh, um, master course, which I'm covering both the two APIs, that is customer to business and business to customer. It's going for 3000. I'll be able to take you through uh, just a live session and explain everything that you need to know of how you can now transit from a sandbox to a live. And uh, now let's get back to our today's video. As I said, uh, we are going to cover what we refer to as a register URL API. So, uh, Kama Kawaida, uh, some of the requirements, you need a text editor, a browser, and a ZAMP or WAMP or MEMP uh, for that matter. So in uh, in this case, um, let me show you. We are going to copy the files again like this. This is customer to business. So customer to business, as I said, we have got two types of APIs, register URL. So that's what we are going to cover today. Now, um, I want to put this, oh no, let me copy them like this. Uh, so that we can explain a little bit so that you get to understand how it works. No, um, so I'm going to close this one and open my, um, how do we call it, Visual Studio, this one. Let me set everything so that we can jump right away and do something. So this one I'm going to close. These are previous uh, uh, that we did, our previous video about SDK push. STK push is suitable for for what we refer to as um, uh, e-commerce. But now we are doing uh, register URL, URL, which is suitable for, um, which is very, which is a nice API when it comes to uh, a scenario where we are, you are using a pay bill. Because pay bill, you expect like um, it's water bills, electricity for go tv you are making subscription and all those kind of stuff so this is the best api that you can use and uh, i'm going to paste my files on that directly that we have created on that folder hdocs we have created a folder by the name register underscore url i'm going to paste my files there and the first file that you are going to work with is access token but before we work with access token i expect you have the Daraja account and again let me log in uh, again I want to explain a little bit about how this API works and how different it is from uh, the SDK push now SDK push it normally pops you to enter the pin so it's like it initiates the whole transaction whether the amount and where you are supposed to pay it normally pushes so it's only for the customer to enter the pin and the transaction is completed so in that case that you expect it works well when it comes to you are paying for a shopping products that you've paid maybe you, uh, you want to make the payments online so this is suitable in such a scenario an e-commerce system but now here i have got a system which is a circle system and this circle system you expect customers um will register to be members once they register to be members they will be savings so you don't expect the customer to log into our system so that they can make the savings 
So uh, you just need to give the customer a specific account number which they can use and it's going to bind whatever the payments that they make, whatever the saving amount they want to put on the savings and it's going to be matched together with their account number here on the system. So that's how you can use um, register URL. So for the customer to make the payments, they don't need to log into the system. They just need to pick their phone number. Uh, that is their phone. And they will go to M-Pesa. That is uh, on the SIM toolkit. So when they get there, they'll go to Lipana M-Pesa. And once they get to Lipana M-Pesa, they will choose uh, where they normally enter the pay bill number or account number, whichever. And then there is another step, which is entering the account number, which is the saving account, something like that. Or maybe if you're paying for meter, for like uh, electricity, for bills for water, a subscription for maybe GoTV and all those kind of stuff, this is the best API that we normally use in such a scenario. So, uh, so how does it work? It, uh, once you make the payments, the message is shared back to you for confirmation message and also it is shared to the the owner of the pay bill and also the message is shared to the system so that it can be notified so and so made a payment for this account number and if you have done your system well automatically if it was subscription it is going to turn on the uh, subscription send a message to notify that uh, now the subscription is ready the client maybe they can log in if it is uh, like netflix to watch movies and all that if it is um uh, savings we are going to be recorded the system it's uh, maybe water bills it's going to that invoice is going to be sh um, um, updated as paid something like that or if it is, was not paid full uh, now you can record the payment and match your transaction at later uh, stage so that's how we normally use this kind of api so it is suitable for such a scenario now uh, let's jump right away and start uh, working with it so uh, we get to access token as i said it's what we are going to start with and here uh, all these apis normally generate access token it's the first thing so it's only that i didn't explain much about how you generate access token when it comes to stk push but remember the consumer key and consumer secret they are the, the reasons why we normally use them it's to generate the what we refer to as the um, uh, the access token so uh how are we going to go about this one i'm going to click here and uh, kama kawaida i copy this one this is how i normally implement this is the easiest api that i normally implement uh, it takes like less than 10 minutes even though client and uh, 10 minutes you know just like it umefanya for for a lot of time so uh, i always prepare pressure and so forth yeah a lot of stuff so yeah because they don't know where you come from it's something that uh, to understand how this code works something that takes you time but yeah any challenges to the client and uh, yeah i'm charged to ten thousand and lamika but they cannot do it we have to do it uh, whenever they are they occupy those the offices if they get per diems and all that they don't complain but why they have to complain so i've copied both the consumer key consumer secret and um now we get the access token this is the access token have uncommented this one so that i can check whether it's working it's generating an access token so come here click there local hosts and then we boom get to register underscore url register underscore url like that then i want to check access token whether it's generating an access token yes that one is right so once it does that i normally get to know that now that one is correct so i get to the next step this one i just comment like that save changes get to the next one which is now the register url this is the most important thing that you need to configure so the difference between this one and the video that i did on previous uh, they changed these endpoints so there is a way that uh, the previous endpoints were configured and the, now the new endpoints are configured in differently. So what you just need to do, as you can see, it has included the access token. Then there is this URL. Then we have got access token. And then we have got uh, our short code. You remember where we picked our short code? If you can't remember from our previous video, short code, you normally get it on APIs 
uh, you get now this one is register url so you need to customer business you click um this one uh simulate uh you can click like that then you get to this one this one like that Red, uh, credentials automatically you're going to get them from here so you get back to this one and what you need to do for this one is just to enter that one like that and you're good to go so once you put that one the other things that you need to configure for this api now the the reason why it is referred to as register url it's because now your system is stored somewhere in a server and for the mpesa uh, application to share the payments which are done to your till number or your pay bill number it you have to provide you have to give mpesa uh, application a specific url where the, the, the mpesa is going to be sharing the messages of any payments that is done to your uh, short code which is the pay bill number so here is where we normally specify the short code so you give it the path it can be your domain like code start can be uh, bonifu whichever whichever domain name that you're using now then uh, this is um, now on the public html you create a folder you can call it pokeape then we have got this file called confirmation underscore url and there is another one which is referred to as a validation url so i'll give the difference between the two and that's how you provide that one so this is another area which you need to edit the rest it's okay so i can uncomment here and tests like that so um, now i want to test but before i test i can explain the difference between confirmation underscore url and validation underscore url uh, in most cases uh, i'm always worried about confirmation url confirmation is the one that receives the payments so validation it's a scenario where you find that before the payment is processed goes through uh, what happens is that the customer will go to uh, lipana mpesa they will enter pay bill they will enter the account number or the invoice number, whichever you provide for the payment, then the amount and they press to make the payment. So what happens is that this payment before it is done, it's completed, it has to be validated. So it will go through validation. Validation is check whether this payment is a valid payment of an invoice which exists on our system. If it is true, then it can get right away and now the, the payment is going to go through and now the payment uh, message is going to be shared to this confirmation url so confirmation url it's similar to is the same as con, uh, callback underscore url it's similar the same same code actually if i can say uh, only that it differs slightly a small a small portion of it i will explain a little bit so uh, that's how it looks like so i need to save this one and once i save i come here now i don't need to test the access the underscore php uh, access token i need to test now the register url and you click it like that and if you see success boom you are done so as i told you this is the simplest api that you can implement and that's how it, how it goes so it means whenever any payment that is done going to come to your name and all that so this one you have less to do with it unless maybe you want to simulate there is an option for simulate uh, to simulate to see whether it's working there is a code here which i normally provide for simulate you click like that and if the code shows like this one successful it means now uh, the payment is going through and you are good to go with this uh, you can implement it on a live um uh, production app something like that that's what we mean by that now um let's get to what we refer to as a callback underscore url so that you can not call back but it's, it's confirmation but i told you that there is no difference between confirmation url and uh, callback so as you can see this one you are receiving the message so this is where you receive the message from the uh, after the payments has been done so uh, the message is shared by Safaricom. Remember, the client is making the payments offline. Uh, so that's how it is. It's a nice thing because uh, you don't need to log into your system and push, just take a push, no, no. These ones receives any offline transaction that goes, gets to your uh, uh, pay bill number. So once the payment is done, uh, the message is going to be pushed here. And once the message is pushed, it's where you get the message. Once you get the message, there is this option called uh, JSON uh, underscore decode. You know what it does. Uh, it converts the JSON data into PHP array. And I extract two important variables. What I need is the transaction ID, which is the same as MPESA code. 
this is it then we have got the amount which has been paid and there is another thing which is said which is uh, called bill reef number bill reef number is the remember when they are making the payment they normally enter the pay bill number and there is an account number that account number is the same thing that you get here now it can be like uh if it is kplc we normally have got that meter number if it is water uh, you're paying bills for water you'll have um, account number for you are uh, you know the one that you normally use to make the payments if it is uh, maybe subscription for go tv and all that there is that on uh, whatever you normally use so in that case this is where you get the number and those are the most important things once you do that one is to get the data and you insert it to the database so this one it's totally different because you don't need to check the response code because the transaction is not initiated from here the transaction is initiated offline so that's how it works and you just need to insert it to the database and you're good to go so in case maybe you generated uh, uh, maybe it, um, what we refer to as the invoices you just need to update the invoice for this brief number to be paid something like that so that's how it is simple it is and you are good to go and uh, i hope you've learned how it works so in my next video i'll be explaining how you can apply for a till number and how you go live uh, at least for you to get to understand how it works so thank you guys uh, in case maybe you want to learn about this one as i told you i can't give everything here it's very very complex stuff and yeah it's just simplifying things uh, for you to see how it can work so uh, with these just those few lines of code you change boom things work and you are good to go so in case these payments are done now and you want to share uh, maybe assuming uh, you are coding your system using um, you're coding your system using either another language like Java, Nini, and all that, and you are worried how come now I can I want to implement with Java? You can create a URL to check these payments. Every time you receive the payments, are going to be posted to your MySQL database. So you just need to create another API which is going to share this transaction to your um, uh, to your system. Just that simple. Just you create an API that will check whether the transaction has been deposited to your uh, MySQL database. And that's how you do it. Just check. Uh, fetch API. Good to go. Yeah. So that is it. Now I think you've learned something. And uh, yeah, that's simple. That easy. Uh, this one has got less to do. There's, there's things that you can do. And like uh, SDK push, which I said, you can just come here, simulate. Um, click here, uh, here, you enter the 0700711233, like that, if it is phone number, and once you push, it's going to push the transactions. Now, oh, sorry, 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 one last thing, you can do URL management here, when you go live, uh, you don't need to write, like Kitambo, we used to write to Safaricom so that they can change the URL, in case maybe you change the server, in case maybe you change the domain name, you want to do all those kind of stuff but yeah that's a, a thing that i can explain much about it on the live um while going live so uh, see you in the going live section where i explain the steps of how you go live now at least for you to understand how it works so thank you guys and see you on the next video